Guys. It's here. Hey guys, Blur here, and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, we have all sorts of gaming related content from hardware reviews to software reviews. So if you like that type of content, go ahead and stick around and subscribe to the channel. Also, I stream every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube, Twitch, DLive, and Facebook. So come catch us. In today's video, we're gonna be putting in my new NVIDIA RTX 3090 graphics card into Cerberus. I'm so excited. We're gonna be looking at some benchmarks compared to the 2080 that I had in this same very system, this very same, in this, in the, in, in the same computer. And then I'll give you my final thoughts on whether or not this card might be worth it if you're looking at it. This card specifically is a $1,600 card, like after taxes and everything like that. It's not cheap. So if you're ready, I know I am. Let's get into it. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the RTX 3090. Now this is the uh, Ventus 3X, this is from MSI. And a couple of things, this one's kind of no frills. There's no RGB or anything like that on this card. This is just kind of make sure to plug it in and get that power and performance. I think I have enough RGB in the case where this isn't gonna be a problem, but always can do something more about that. So this card has 10,496 CUDA cores. So the standard base clock for this GPU is 1395 and the boost clock being 1725. We're gonna go ahead and change that in overclocking, but that's the base stat for this card. It has 24 gigs of GDDR6X RAM, which is absolutely nuts. Second generation ray tracing cores, third generation tensor cores. This is on the new Ampere architecture. So there's all of that. And this car does 8K gaming. Arguably one or two games. <laughs> For all of you guys out there that have an 8K monitor. So let's go ahead and open it. I'm gonna open it over here. So over there. So this is pretty interesting. This card is so heavy that they give you a bracket to kind of hold it up and make sure that it doesn't sag. So I think that's really interesting. Wonder if I'm gonna have this problem. And then for the main event, ladies and gentlemen, my brand new RTX 3090. Ugh, dude, this is heavy, bro. Oh, 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 oh. this is, Oh man, look at that. All metal, well, <laughs> I was gonna say all metal, but that is definitely plastic. Yeah, the front the front looks like it's plastic. It's got some brushed uh, kind of accents here. The top, again, not RGB. I'm not sure if you can see that actually. The top is not RGB as you see here, right? But it's got the logo on there. In case you're wondering, it does have, let's see if I can get that in focus. Yeah, so it does have kind of the the layout that doesn't crash, or at least that's what I've um, been seeing out on the, the interwebs, if you will. Yeah, really excited to get this into, into the build and see, you know, what type of performance games I can, performance games I can get from this card specifically. So let's go ahead and move over to that. So 
now that the card is in, we're gonna go ahead and run some benchmarks. So this is the exact same PC build. This is Cerberus. This is the score that I was able to achieve overclocking my 2080. So let's go ahead and see what we're gonna be able to pull off with the 3090. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to benchmarks, we're gonna go to Port Royal, and we're gonna go ahead and run our benchmark. So wish me luck. Okay, this is what it ended up coming up at stock. I think that this is really low. I don't think this is right. I think there's something else happening with my PC. Yeah, this is after my overclock on here. I'm not breaking the 10,000s. Really, I don't think that this is right. I think there's something that's keeping me from reaching the appropriate performance that I am expecting to have. All right, cool. So <laughs> yeah, I, I found out what the issue was. There, the, the issue that I was having was twofold. The first one was that I was broadcasting via Discord and evidently if I'm broadcasting via Discord, it has a major hit to the GPU performance. The other thing that I had going on was that I had Ryzen Master running. And so my Ryzen Master overclock that I have on here locks my cores at 4.4. So what that ended up doing was locking all of my cores at 4.4 and not allowing it to boost past that, which if you look at my results when I ended up doing this, I was boosting past that because I forgot to turn on my overclock that time. And I found that I got better performance when it wasn't overclocked. So that was pretty interesting. This is the new score that I got 12.5. 12 and this is prior to overclocking so it's time to go ahead and start the overclock and see what i get all right guys so after a, a bit of trial and error a couple of crashes this is the more stable score that i was able to get again this is nothing crazy i'm not putting anything on the card extra to cool it this isn't an open test bench this is in an enclosed case I'm not running a Intel processor on here, so that already is going to kind of cut down my single core performance and also make it so that I'm not gonna be the absolute top top of the leaderboard. But if I do compare these results online and I pull these up, you know, I gotta say, being the top 5% of PC builds in the world that have run this test, I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. <laughs> These are real world in the case benchmarks. This was the most stable I was able to get it. And you know what? I'm not mad at it. I actually am really happy with the results that I'm getting out of this. What are my thoughts on the 3090? I very specifically, this one, look, I, I think it's wonderful. It, it was one heck of an upgrade from where I was coming from before. The 2080 is a fantastic card, but wow, does it not hold a candle to the 3090. But that performance comes at a hefty cost. And anybody considering a 3090 just for gaming, don't. The RTX 3080 gets you most of this performance at more than half the cost of this card. So it's something that you should be considering when you're looking at purchasing your new video card. If I was just gaming on this card, I would not actually have a 3090. So then who is a 3090 for? 8K gaming? No, no, 8K gaming's not really a thing. If you are a content creator, if you do 3D modeling, if you have work that requires this type of headroom and memory, because really the, the big feature of this card is actually the memory that's on board. 24 gigs of DDR6X RAM. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. But if you're doing video editing, I know DaVinci Resolve can take advantage of the GPU. If you're doing streaming, if you're doing 3D modeling or anything like that, any of those types of workloads, it makes a lot of sense for you to get a card like this. This. Just don't expect it to be two times better than the 3080 because it's far from that. Also, a couple of things to consider before jumping into one of these graphics cards in this kind of ecosystem. Keep in mind that AMD has a new card coming out and there's a lot of speculation that that might actually be a little bit better than the 3080. So 
you might want to wait until they make those announcements before you decide on which card you want to purchase. I think that one's more of a uh, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so guys, what do you think? Would you be getting a 3090? Are you going to be happy with a 3080 if that's the route you're going to go? Or are you perfectly happy playing on your 1050 Ti? Leave your comments down below. Guys, if you like this video, please go ahead and drop a like on the video. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe to the channel and then hit that little bell icon so you get notified anytime a new video comes out. I stream every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, DLive, and Twitch. So if you have a moment, come hang out with us. And with all that being said, thank you guys for joining us today and we'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy.